This is the Fan Without Fear Completest Retrospective, and my name is Nick, the Fan Without Fear. Let's take a look at what's on our radar for today. Uncanny Origins number 13, The Origin of Daredevil. Hopefully you won't hear me say this often, but I really hate this comic. You might say it's my fault, because I brought too many expectations with me. But I was really excited when I even found out this comic book existed. I don't know how I missed the short-lived Uncanny Origin series, but when I found the Daredevil comic, I was really excited to buy it and read it. And what's inside? Nothing but a rehash. A completely creatively bereft rehash. Released in 1996 and 97, the Uncanny Origin series only lasted 14 issues. Common for the era in which these stories were printed, most issues focused on Uncanny X-Men characters. But some months did present other heroes, like Doctor Strange and the Incredible Hulk, as well as fan-favorite supporting characters from Spider-Man, including Venom and the Black Cat. After I read the Daredevil issue, I did seek out a few more Uncanny Origins books, and some of them are okay. I actually liked the Fire Lord issue. The key difference here is most comic readers already know the Matt Murdock origin, but the story of a lesser-known Herald of Galactus, like Fire Lord, is a lot more interesting to hear retold in this basic format. Unfortunately, offering stories about minor characters instead of the main superhero headliners does not always offer an instant financial success. Issue number 13 was our Daredevil story and was more or less written by Bob Budiansky. Mr. Budiansky has a long career in comics as an editor, writer, and even a penciler. Though he was briefly an editor on Daredevil in 1984, he is best known for writing Marvel's Transformers comics and co-creating Sleepwalker with Brett Blevins. This Uncanny Origins issue is penciled by M.C. Wyman, who has worked on various books including a short run drawing The Mighty Thor in the mid-90s. On the title page, there's also a special acknowledgement of Stan Lee. Now, I'm not talking about the regular Stan Lee Presents you see all the time before Marvel story titles. This book additionally specifies the ideas and words of Stan the Man made this story possible, which is fair because they use an awful lot of his words verbatim. But frankly, a lot is shamelessly copied from Bill Everett's art from Daredevil No. 1, and even some of John Romita Jr.'s art from Frank Miller's 1993 five-part The Man Without Fear origin story is used. Just like the classic origin story from Daredevil No. 1, this issue tells Matt's story through a long flashback. The book starts by establishing Daredevil is traveling by rooftop and is in a big hurry to make an appointment on time. Immediately, Matt seems to forget he's in a hurry, and based on the artwork, he even forgets he is blind. The sounds and smells of amateur boxing draw him to peek into a window to reminisce about his father, battling Jack Murdock. This is where the flashback begins, and we start seeing truncated versions of Stan Lee's original dialogue plugged directly into the book. Turn the page, and Marvel's rehashing and ripping off of their own property only gets worse. Entire panels of this book are redrawn from the Everett work from 1964. We see young Matt throwing his books, Matt exercising and training with his father's equipment, Jack Murdock checking on his son's studies and signing with the crooked boxing promoter The Fixer. As for the chemical accident with the old man and the truck, most of the page is taken directly from the Man Without Fear miniseries. I really want to be clear here, this issue of Uncanny Origins is not just full of homages. The vast majority of the material here is deliberately duplicated from the older books. 
I assume this comic was thrown together pretty quickly as a cash-in for Marvel, but apparently was not a success because they only released one more issue before canceling Uncanny Origins altogether. Budiansky and Wyman even redo those panels I've criticized in the past, which describe Matt's powers. They updated the script here so the powers are better explained, but they still chose to leave in that weird thing about counting grains of salt on a pretzel by taste. I'm going to give them a pass on this one and assume they're trying to be funny this time. What really frustrates me is the small amount of original material, because what we do get is not bad. Strangely, after completely reusing four panels, which cover graduating college and founding Nelson and Murdoch, we get some original dialogue about Matt needing to reassert himself and find the drive he had before his father's murder. This small addition really adds a lot of motivation to Matt as a man on a never-ending crusade against crime. I wish there were more original thoughts here, because this one offering is actually good writing. We see Matt put his costume together and go after the Fixer's thugs. Some of the fight choreography is slightly different here, but most of the art is still not original. At the end of the flashback, there is one panel which has completely new art, but I'll be honest, it doesn't make much sense. Instead of leaping over a subway turnstile, Daredevil now exits the subway station by running up the handrail on the stairs. Back in the present, Daredevil suddenly remembers he was in a hurry and changes from his uniform and horns and into a tuxedo and anime hairstyle. Foggy and Karen are waiting for him in an ending which reminds me of something ripped right out of a children's storybook. Matt receives the Lawyer of the Year Award. The name may be generic, but the trophy itself looks like the Holy Hand Grenade of Antioch. Matt's thoughts return to his father, and he silently dedicates the award to him. Coming up, we are going to start looking at some of my favorite comics. So I want to make sure you don't miss it. Make sure you subscribe, like, and leave us a comment. Let let us know what you think. Also, you can find Fwaf Comics, that's Fan Without Fear Comics, on Twitter and Facebook. Make sure you reach out to us. And until next time, always live without fear.